Well, no matter how much progress the Obama administration makes with budget legislation in Washington or in foreign policy efforts overseas, it's the jobs number that's likely going to make or break the 2012 race. Joining me now is Democratic strategist Crystal Ball and Neil Asbury. He's a conservative radio talk show host. Thank you so much to the both of you for being here. Oh, thanks for having us. You know, Neil, I want to start Thank with you, you. This is the third straight good report. Maybe most importantly, we're seeing finally that overall number of private sector jobs added. It's kind of hard. Hard, Neil, wouldn't you say, to argue the political ramifications of these latest numbers plays in the president's favor, no? Well, on the initial look at it, I guess you could say that. But as your previous guest just pointed out, four million people have stopped looking for jobs. These numbers don't take them into consideration. In the month of January alone, a half a million people stopped looking for a job. You know, if you added just half of these people back to the unemployment numbers, unemployment would increase by one and a half percent, putting it nearly at 10.4 percent. Then you have shadow unemployment. And this is a big number that I wish we would talk more about and that's people that have taken part-time jobs or that have taken jobs below their skill set uh, just to have just to have food on the table and these numbers don't take them into consideration so we still have a long 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 way to go I mean we need to create a lot more jobs in order to do that we need stability you know this fear and anxiety is the antithesis of growth and confidence well, and Crystal until we have this confidence we're not going to have the jobs that we need to employ employ all our people. Well, well, Crystal, if that is in fact the GOP stance, how would you advise the president as he moves forward in making his argument for the 2012 race? Well, I, I think you had it exactly right. This is a great sign for the president. It's more encouraging signs that we are in fact in a nascent recovery. Um, even more complete looks at unemployment, including those people who have given up the job search, show that unemployment is down. We see new unemployment insurance claims down, corporate profit up, profits up. So so all of that is a good sign for the president. And the economy really is going to be the number one issue in this 2012 election. So I think it's a very good sign. All right. Now the issue of massive entitlement programs, because we're dealing with the budget issue, big topic. And we have today reports that um, reports from The Wall Street Journal that John Boehner has privately assured the president that House Republicans will not attack him if he goes after these massive entitlement programs. Do you see this, Crystal? As as just talk or maybe some reason to be optimistic? You know, I, I have maintained optimism on this point. Um, I have been increasingly frustrated with a budget debate that's been limited to the 17% of our budget that is non-defense discretionary spending. Um, it's a bit like trying to balance your household budget by cutting back on the toothpaste budget. It's not significant and it's going to do a lot of long-term damage. Um, so I, I think this is very encouraging. I think we're also seeing, and this is kind of ironic, um, the House GOP leadership can't, doesn't know what its Tea Party members and its freshman members are going to do. It's actually forced them a bit to the center because they know that they're going to have to work with Democrats on the other side to get anything done. Neil, I want to talk to you about an op-ed, another big issue that could hurt the president this morning. I want to check an excerpt from Kimberly Strassel's Potomac Watch and take a look at this quote. We'll bring it up at a full screen for you. An immutable fact of expensive gasoline, Americans will find some someone to blame for this. This is, after all, a White House that is put at the center of its domestic agenda, its goal of a green economy, which hinges on making fossil fuels too expensive for Americans to purchase. So how much could the price at the pump, up four cents overnight, hurt this administration? Well, I think it's going higher. I think that the democracy movement in the Middle East is going to spread even further than it's already. Uh, I, uh, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Lebanon, and even Iran. And how exciting is that? And obviously, when this happens for a short while, there will be uncertainty in the crude oil market. So that is going to drive prices up. And the other thing that's happening is that China is becoming more assertive. They need more energy, and they're competing with us more for that energy supply around the world. And that's precisely why we need to produce more of our energy resources right here at home. If we're going to bring the cost of gasoline at the pump down, we're going to have to do that more at home than to rely on uh, energy sources overseas. Crystal and Neil, we're out of time, but I want to thank you both for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.